Look at the bulletin today on uh, Jesus is coming soon. Uh, the entire sermon's taken from that. Is Jesus coming soon? And we sing a song sometimes, some of us sing it, Jesus is coming soon. And I know Tommy was talking about that not long ago on Wednesday night. That there's some that don't want to sing that song. That they don't feel good about singing that. Others thinking, well, th think about it. We sing, sing other songs and, uh, and we don't have trouble with other songs we sing that talk about the coming of the Lord like this one. It won't be very long. Now, I know that song starts off a little different, but, but the very next phrase in this song, it, it won't be very long till Jesus shall descend and then the dead in Christ from beds of clay shall rise. That day is drawing near. Well, I've heard people sing that and sing it, just put themselves into it, but they don't want to sing, Jesus is coming soon. Well, what's the difference there and why? I, when I sing, it won't be very long. I think about how that song begins. It won't be very long till this short life shall end. And, and that's what I'm thinking of when I sing it won't be very long. I'm just singing joyfully about the, 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 the demise that I'm, I will soon have. I tell you, none of our lives will last very long. And, and, and this short life, life's little day will end and then we step into eternity and I sing the rest of that song about eternity. But when you look close at the words, we're really singing as though the Lord's going to come and his coming is very near is what, what we're singing in that song. That one doesn't bother me like Jesus is coming soon. Tom made me, after he did that, made me question, why, why would one song bother me and the other doesn't? Now, I'll tell you why people sing Jesus is coming soon. When, uh, now, some people sing it because they think they can see the signs of the times and can tell why. It, it's just right here on us. He, he's just about ready to come. But most of my brethren that sing that song don't believe that. They don't believe they're looking at the signs to tell when Jesus is coming. So why do they sing Jesus is coming soon? Well, it's kind of like I do with this song. They don't, they don't really mean what they're singing. Uh, you might think, well, how can you do that? Listen, poetry is that way. Poetry can mean something different than what it actually says. Now, you have to be careful with that. There's a lot of songs we sing that, that if I wanted to really get particular about it, I'd say, well, now that's not, that's not exactly right, the way we sing that. And so if you got real, you'd have to throw a lot of the songs in our book out so we can't sing those. But when we remember it's poetry, then what we can do with poetry and what the poet usually expects us to do, it's to kind of impose a meaning. See, poetry is restricted by the, the language in which the poetry is used and cannot always express itself specifically and, and exactly like the scriptures do. We're not singing scripture when we do that. Now we gotta be careful about that. And so there's some songs we sing, sometimes people say, well, I, I'm not sure, I don't wanna sing that part. And I understand that. If someone is singing Jesus is coming soon, I tell you what my brethren tell me, they're singing. They say, well, when I sing that, well, here's what I mean. I mean, Jesus could come soon. I, I mean, I may even mean I wish Jesus would come soon. And Jesus is coming sooner or later. Or it's sooner than it's ever been are in view of eternity. You think of God's eternity, then his second coming would be soon. In view, in view of that, it's a relative term. And I understand that. So I don't judge my brethren that saying Jesus is coming soon, but I tell you, I have trouble singing it. But that's a song that usually when that song is sung, I, I don't want to sing it. And, um, and I'm kind of torn because I really want to support the song leader and I want to be part of the singing, but 
that conjures up to me, when I hear that song, I remember growing up listening to the radio and those preachers that would be shouting and gasping on that radio that's talking about the signs of the times. And, and they really thought Jesus is about, some of them would set dates. And they say, he's coming on this day. And, and, and that day would pass and people would think, oh, how silly all those Christians are that think that Jesus is coming. And, and it bothers me when I sing that because that's what I think of. And I think a lot of people thinking of that think, well, I, I can say Jesus is coming. It's that soon part that is a bother and have, and have trouble over that. So here's what we've got to do when we sing songs like that. Now, some songs maybe we ought to avoid. Okay, if they're divisive, we ought to avoid. But if someone's singing a song and you don't think that song is exactly right, be careful about judging them. They probably mean something different from that in that song than what you're thinking they're meaning. And if you don't see someone singing a particular song, um, if you don't see me, Jesus is coming soon, don't think I'm judging you. I'm not doing that. I'm struggling with my own scruples on this. I tell you, that's all. Our book leaves out the second verse. Now there's a second verse, but the second verse in our song book is the third verse of the song. Most of the songs have this in the second verse. Love of so many cold, losing their homes of gold. This in God's word were told, evils abound. When these signs come to pass, during the end at last, it will come very fast, trumpets will sound. You know what that's doing? The writer of that song is writing from Matthew chapter 24. And he's getting the first part of that chapter where Jesus is talking about his coming in judgment on Jerusalem, which to them was going to come very soon. Mixed up <coughs> with the last part of that, that chapter that's talking about his second coming. Here's what it says in the first part. And because of iniquity shall about the love of many shall wax cold. See? And it says, now learn the parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and purteth forth leaves, ye shall know that summer is nigh. So likewise, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Now the apostles had asked. Jesus said, not one stone of this temple will be left on upon another. And the apostles asked in the first part of that chapter, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Well, they thought the temple would be destroyed at the end of the world. And Jesus tells them about his coming in judgment on Jerusalem. He said, now that's coming and it's coming soon. It, and these are the signs to watch for. But then he gets to the end of the world he says, now when heaven and earth pass away, there's not going to be signs. And no one knows when that will be. And so there's two things. Now a lot of people get that mixed up. And the person that wrote Jesus is coming soon had that mixed up in the second verse. Here's what Jesus said before and after he said those words. In Matthew 23, 36, Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. And then he says, Matthew 24, 34. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. That's about the, the, the destruction of the temple. The destruction of Jerusalem. Matthew 24, the very next verse. He says, heaven and earth shall pass away. But my word shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. You, you see the difference? In, in what's going to happen in that generation and hear the signs? And when heaven and earth pass away and no man knows when that will occur? 
And there's not going to be signs. And let me tell you, you may not want to sing Jesus is coming soon. I understand that. But Jesus is coming. Some people sing that song. Really, the, the main reason they sing that is to remind us Jesus is coming. We need to remember that. And he talks about this in the last part of this chapter. He says it's going to be like it was in the days of Noah. Look what he says. But as the days of Noah were, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall the coming of the Son of Man be. What's that mean? They were eating and drinking and giving in marriage. They were just going right on about their life just like everything's just normal. Like nothing is going to happen. Just living every day like they always live. Well, how could that be? Well, didn't Noah tell them the flood was coming? And didn't they see that he had built an ark to prepare for the coming flood? Well, yeah, Noah had told them and he built the ark. But let me tell you, they weren't paying any attention. They were just going right on with the way they were living. It's going to be that way when the Lord comes back. You see, the Lord came preaching that he's coming and he's told us to preach it. And I'm one of those preachers going to keep preaching it. And preachers all across the land in your Bible tells us he's coming again. And not only that, he built a church so people could get in it. And what are people doing? Well, now a lot of them just living their lives like nothing's going to happen. And they're not going to know until it's too late. Peter talks about this in 2 Peter 3, verses 3 through 7. There shall come in the last days scoffers after their own lust and saying, where's the promise of his coming? But since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of water and in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. But the heavens and the earth which now are by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. He's coming and he's warned us. Now he hadn't told us when. And some people will not be ready. They're going to live their lives like nothing's going to happen. But it's going to happen. It'll be like people going about their business like men going out in the field to work. Two men will go out in the field to work and one of them be ready. The other won't be ready. Two, men, two women grinding at the mill. There shall be two in the field. The one shall be taken and the other left. Two women grinding at the mill. The one shall be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour the Lord doth come. You know what that means? Men are going to get up and they're going to go to work. And the women, they're going to be fixing the mills. That's what grinding at the mill you'd do. You'd, you'd take your grain and then probably talking here about the little home mills, the, the little hand mills where they would... Grind their, their grain out so they can make the bread. Feed that man when he gets home. He's out there growing the grain. I guess she's in there fixing it up, going to make the bread so they can eat for that day. And folks just going about their life like, like anything. But then the Lord's going to come. And it says, one will be taken and the other left. Well, I've heard all these tales about how, you know, cars be driving down the road and they won't have a driver and or planes will be flying in the sky and the good Christian pilot's gone. The plane doesn't have a pilot, you know, and all. Well, listen, I think what this is talking about, we read about it in 1 Thessalonians 4, 15 through 17. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. 
So that's when the graves are open and the dead will rise first. What happens next? Then we which were alive and remain shall be called up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. There's going to come a time when the Lord comes. It never says he's coming back to the earth, but he's going to come in the air, and we will rise to meet him in the air. And so in that manner, we will always be with the Lord. And there's going to be a great separation that day between the sheep and the goats, one taken and the other left. And we'll be talking about that in a few weeks when we get to that scripture, which is soon to come upon us. But that's what this is talking about, that separation and that coming of the Lord. It's going to be like this, like a thief. You know, a thief doesn't tell you when he's coming. You ever got a phone call? Said, Doug. Uh, I'm, I'm planning on coming by later on tonight. I'm going to rob your house. Well, you don't get calls like that. That's not how a thief does it. A thief comes when you're not expecting him to come. And that's what the Lord said. I'm going to come like a thief. He says, but know this, that if the goodman of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore, be ye also ready. He says it again here now. Look. For in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. Peter talked about that. So the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. I'll tell you what his coming is going to be like. It's going to be like the man that left his servants in charge and he went away and expects them to be doing their business and he's going to come check on them but he's not going to let them know when he comes it's going to be one of those surprise evaluations he's just going to show up and see what they're doing and some of them are going to be doing just what they ought to be doing and he's going to see who's been goofing off. Here's what he tells it. He explains it this way. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find doing. Verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. But and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, my Lord delayeth his coming and shall begin to smite his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunken. The Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him and in an hour that he is not aware of and shall cut him asunder and upon his portion with the hypocrites. And there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So it's like a surprise inspection, wasn't it? And you're not going to be told before that it's coming. You just better be doing what you ought to be doing. You just make sure you're doing what you ought to be doing and everything is fine. It's no time to slack off because you don't think he's going to come today or tomorrow. So I'll go follow that. No, he could come anytime. I tell you what, sometimes people think, I wonder if I really want to go to worship. I'm kind of tired of going to worship. I think I'll stay in. What if the Lord comes? You know, the Lord could come that night that you decide I'm not going to go on Sunday night. He, what if he came on Sunday night while you weren't here? If the Lord comes on Sunday night, I want to be with my brethren at worship. That's where I, what would I say if he came and, and I was doing something else or, or Wednesday night? Now, if, there's times when you can't make it because of the, the requirements of life. But I tell you, if you can and you just neglect and then the Lord comes, but do you want him to catch you like that? I don't want that. Blessed is he when he comes, the Lord find doing, doing what you ought to do. Think about in your decisions of what you ought to do. Think about, is this what I want to be found doing if the Lord were to come while I'm doing this? And that'll help guide good decisions, see, on where you ought to be. Now, you need to be prepared and stay prepared. A parable from the next chapter about being prepared for the Lord to come. 
and go ahead and getting prepared before he comes. Don't wait until he starts, till you hear that shout or you hear the trump says, oh, I better get ready. You won't have time to get ready. Stay prepared. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened to ten virgins which bore their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps while the bridegroom tarried. That's how the Lord's going to come. He tarries. But that doesn't mean he's not coming. He is coming. And don't think because he tarries, I don't have to be ready. He's tarrying, so I won't, I won't stay ready. That's what this parable is about. You stay prepared. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept, and at midnight there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you, but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. They that were ready went in. It went with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came the other virgin, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Too late. Now they all knew he was coming. In fact, they all had their lamps. And they all slumbered and slept. But even then, some of them were prepared. They made sure they had the oil in their lamps so they would be ready when he came. But the foolish, I don't have to get ready yet. Why, he's tarried, he's, he's, he's always late, he's not, he won't be here for a while, I'll just put it off, I'll put it off. And then when the Lord came, it's too late. Listen, those that were ready went in. I want to be ready, because I want to go in. And the others come knocking at that closed door. Kind of like that door to the ark in the days of Noah. It was too late. That door was shut. And the Lord of the house, I know you're not. In other words, what he's telling you, you don't have anything to do with this anymore. So you, you missed your chance. We're going to have this wedding party without you. And so we want to stay ready. And that's what he taught. The next verse. Next verse. Watch therefore... For you know neither the day nor the hour when the Son of Man cometh. So Jesus is coming. Now here's, a, here's something I have seen. This is a picture of a concrete cross. And, and I have seen this along the highways. Uh, I used to see this going up to Oneida. The, on 127, there was a, along the side of the road, there was this a concrete cross. I saw one over in Polk County, Tennessee, that like when you're going up, like you're going to Copper Hill and Okoe River, but there used to be along the side of the road one of these concrete crosses. And there were several of them scattered about. I don't know where this one was, where they took this picture. On the front of that cross, it said, Jesus is coming soon. On the back of that cross, it would say, get right with God. Well, that, that was those old shouting preachers having somebody put that cross up. They're warning people, Jesus is coming. And to and emphasize that warning, they put the soon on there. Well, I always wonder if they thought it was soon, why'd they put up a concrete cross? It would last and last and last. Well, something didn't fit with me about that, but that was the, the sign. And you might still find some of those old crosses along the, the highways up in Appalachia somewhere. Jesus is coming soon. That's what I think of when I hear that song, Jesus is coming soon. There's another sign I used to see. Jesus is coming are you ready? 
Someone made a stencil. I, I can tell what they did. They, they had these boards and they'd laid this stencil and they'd spray paint over that stencil and pull that up and have a sign and they'd nail it to a tree somewhere and you could drive along the road and you could see these signs. Again, when I used to drive from Chattanooga to Oneida, Tennessee, I must have passed dozens of these signs. It said, Jesus is coming. Are you ready? I need a question mark at the end of that, don't I? I left the question mark off. But I tell you, that's a good sign. Jesus is coming. And we need to ask ourselves, am I ready when Jesus comes? Have you ever thought that he could come today? This is it? It could be. And so we need to stay ready. And in all of this, Jesus is teaching us that we need to be ready. Here's what he said. Watch. Be ready. Be faithful. That's like that faithful and wise servant. Be faithful. Be found doing when he comes. And stay prepared. That's what we need to do. Let's don't get whole, so hung up on the soon part sometime that we don't forget the main point. The main point is he is coming. And um, you need to be ready. I tell you, he told us how to get ready. He, here's how you get ready. You hear and believe and obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you haven't done that, you're not ready. You, you repent of your sin. You confess his name before men. You're baptized into Christ. You come up out of that water a new creature. Now you're ready. Okay, now the thing to do is stay ready. Expect his coming. Ask yourself, if he comes now, is this what I want to be found doing? And do those things. Because he is coming, and so be prepared. Get ready. And then stay prepared. Be faithful and stay prepared. And that's why I walk over and over and over. You'll hear me say this because I love you and we all need to be ready. If he comes right now, I want every one of us to rise and meet him in the air and be with him forever. And that day will come. And so with that, I extend the invitation. You got a chance this morning, if you're not ready, to get ready. And I hope you'll take advantage of that opportunity.